Hello. It's great to be together again through uh, social media. And uh, today, uh, those some of you that were actually in the live service today, or if you were uh, listening to Pastor on the digital service today, <clears throat> talked about genuine love. <clears throat> now, kids or people that are not kids, children of God like myself, um, the title of the sermon was Genuine Love. Using Romans, the 12th chapter, verses 9 through 21. And um, actually the Apostle Paul is talking to uh, people that have accepted Christ, but he's, he's teaching them about how to be different than they were before. Um, and you're never too young once you're able to read or go to school or things like that to have not already picked up habits. And we all have our personalities and they're not the same. And you watch TV, a lot of young people, you watch cartoons. And uh, I was just thinking of the Marvel cartoons. They always they like the Avengers or they have this group goes against that group and they have the bad guys and the good guys and all that. As Christians, um, we're different. We're supposed to be different than everybody else. And that takes a lot of teaching and loving God because the way God does things it really is backwards most of the time than how you think something should be done in the natural. And so I'm going to read um, this scripture. I'm not going to read all of it. He did Romans uh, 19 to 21, and I'm just going to pick a few scriptures here that I'm going to read from that. Uh, I'm going to start with verse 9, Romans uh, 12, 9. Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil. Cling to what is good. Verse 10, be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love in honor, giving preference to one another. I'm going to stop right there for a minute. Um, some of you very younger ones, the word hypocrisy is probably a word that you don't know. Uh, hypocrisy is fakeness. You know that. Hypocrisy is when I say you shouldn't eat candy bars before dinner because you'll ruin your appetite and I s tell you not to eat a candy bar, and then I eat one because I really like candy bars. And that means, well, gee, you said this, but you did that. That's what hypocrisy is. So if we love without hypocrisy, that means we don't love and, and, and say love is one way and then love another way. And in the second verse that I read there, verse uh, 10, be kindly affectionate to one another uh, with brotherly love. Brotherly love is not love like mm, that kind of love. Uh, brotherly love is when you uh, you have something and you share with that person. Uh, that person's troubles are your troubles. Uh, they have a if they're sad, you're sad because they're sad. And it says in honor, giving preference to one another. The word preference comes from the word prefer. Uh, I might have two ice cream, two kinds of ice cream at a birthday party. I said, do you prefer chocolate or do you prefer vanilla? You have a preference. Now, this preference doesn't mean choosing this or that. This means, well, actually it does. It means if there's one something that there's only enough for one person, do you take it or do you let that other person have it? You're giving preference to them. And, um, and of course, 11, it talks about serving the Lord. Now, verse 12, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer. That means we hope in Christ because he is our hope. Uh, tribulation, you know, when you're going through something bad like trials, you know, something that you didn't bring on yourself. Tribulation is something that happens to you because of nothing you did wrong. Or maybe, maybe not nothing you did wrong, but basically unfairness to you. And uh, steadfast, I mean, you, you stick with it. 
And so when, when something goes on that's unfair to you, say someone told a story on you in school, a teacher gave you an unfair grade, gave someone, didn't give you the grade you deserve, maybe gave someone else a grade they didn't deserve, you pray about it. And, 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 and you just be patient. You go ahead and do the right things and continue doing your best. And God will take care of it. Just pray about it. And uh, verse 14, bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse. Someone uh, picks on you, don't say, I hate them, I just wish they'd get pneumonia, or just wish they just, just something bad would happen to them. Don't do that. Say, Lord, I, 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 I wish you would bless them with um, getting saved or maybe bless them with the, being happy or not being as mean. I, I, Lord, I wish you would help them be a better person. And um, in, in uh, verse 15, it says, rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Uh, weep is another word for crying and rejoicing. You know what rejoicing is, rejoice, you know, happiness. Um, sometimes, uh, sometimes somebody's really happy about something they, they have. And we say, oh, uh, they're just rubbing it in because I don't have that or you know, they didn't deserve that. Or either, how come I didn't get it? They, they got the prize and I should have got the prize. Don't do that. Don't do that. Because that's not being loving. Loving is, uh, I'll give an example. Uh, we had a house that had a lot of problems and a lot of you young people visited it. And some of you not so young people. And uh, a friend of ours got a, a new house, uh, Dr. Bev and, and, and Bishop Martin got a new house out in Vandalia. And I went to visit, and, oh my gosh, it was so nice and pretty. And I came back to my house, and it, it you know, we call, it always had something wrong with it. Let's just put it that way. You had to fix this and fix that. And I didn't, uh, I, to be honest, it didn't bother me that much. It bothered me a little bit. Uh, someone said, oh, how do you feel when you go over to your friend's house? And she said, I'm happy. I'm happy for my friend. And don't you know that our house burned down? That isn't how I wanted the blessing. But then the Lord gave me a brand new house through the insurance company. So, you know, I'm not saying that's why it happened, but maybe it was. And uh, verse 17, I'm going to go down to there. It says, repay no one evil for evil. Have regard, that means have, think about uh, things wanting it. Have regard, want something. For good things in the sight of all men. Now, we stopped talking about brothers and sisters in Christ now, and now we've included not only them, but, but we've included everybody. This, this isn't just the other kids at church. This isn't your other friends if you know they're Christians. This isn't your, your, your if you're a little bit older, that's just not the kids that are in your uh, Youth for Christ group or whatever. This is everybody. And in verse 18, it says, as if possible, now remember this, if possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Let me tell you, you can't get along with everybody, no matter how hard you try. But as a representative of Jesus Christ, we always have to try. Uh, otherwise, if someone starts arguing with you, you try to be peaceful about it. You don't uh, argue with them and try to get your point across. You don't uh, get mad and stomp off. You don't call them a name. Uh, you, you try to make peace. Now, there's a difference between keeping the peace and making peace. So I, let me correct myself. You try to... Uh, <clears throat> Keep things in a peaceful situation. Now, that doesn't mean you compromise yourself. If someone says, if you don't go with me uh, and do this bad thing, uh, then you, you, you're not my friend and I hate you and we're going to fight. And you don't, you don't go do something bad just to keep the peace or, or make peace. You, you know, you, you don't... Uh, do something wrong just to try to make things right. Does that make any sense? Now, you don't start trouble. And when trouble comes, you might try to solve the problem, but sometimes that's not possible either. And so when that happens, you just, you just leave it alone. You might feel badly about it. Uh, someone may think you didn't do what you needed to do about it. 
But you, you stay true to what Jesus would want you to do. That, that's, that's most important of all. You do what Jesus would want you to do. And you know, you know most times because that, that Holy Spirit in your little heart tells you. I, I remember one day in class, a sailor said, little, little sailor, she said, um, Sister Harvey, she said, uh, sometimes I'll be doing something and I start to, and I do it, and, and I know there's something inside of me that says, no, you shouldn't have did that. And then I feel really bad about it. And she said, that's why I know I have Jesus in my heart. That's why I know I have the Holy, and I explained that's the Holy Spirit in her heart. And so uh, all of us, we need to continue to love like Jesus did. The Bible said Jesus was a friend to sinners. And uh, some people find that strange to believe. But, you know, we're all sinners saved by grace because none of us can live 100% of the time without doing any sin. Thinking a bad thought about somebody is a sin. Not doing something God wants you to do is a sin. Um, it's just, just we're made that way because of Adam and Eve's sin. And so don't beat yourself up. But don't just try to deliberately sin. But don't beat yourself up. Um, get your, you know, just say, Lord, I love you and help me be the best person I can be. Now, verse 20 says, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. And I won't read the rest. Well, I will, but it's hard to explain to you what it means. For in so doing, you will heap coals of fire on his head. That means uh, that you'll make him... Will she maybe make him sorry, make him sorry for having done what he did, he or she? Uh, Pastor explained earlier that in olden days, like back in biblical times, like Old Testament times, the Egyptians had started a, a thing that if you had done something bad to somebody and you were really sorry, you would put a pat on your head. And on top of that, you would put a pan with some charcoal, uh, hot charcoal briquettes on it. I guess it would make you sweat or miserable or something. And so everybody would know you were sorry. So we're not going to do that. And then the last verse in this was, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Now you say, how can I be overcome by evil? I used to get upset. I've, I've had to battle with my temper since I was a little girl. And some of you out there are going through that too, I know. Um, I would get very, very angry at someone. And even in my adult life, to be honest, but the Lord has helped me with that a lot. And I would say, you made me mad. You made me throw that thing at you. You made me hit you. You made me, and, and that's not true. But in a way... It is because the evil that was done to me, I let it get to me. I let it overcome me. But we're not to let evil overcome us. We're to overcome evil. And the way you overcome evil is when someone does something evil to you or treats you in a mean, horrible way, or maybe just not even a mean, horrible way, but just a mean little way on the playground or when you're playing with your cousins or playing with your friends or whatever. Don't go back and do something mean to them. My husband always called it tit for tat. They do this, you do that. They did this, you did that. Don't do that because that, that's not how Jesus wants us to be. Uh, someone mean to you, Next time you see them, uh, share your share a cookie with them, share your candy bar with them, uh, share your favorite book that you're reading with them. Let them uh, do something that lets them know you love them. And they may feel kind of funny because the last time they were with you, they weren't nice to you. And so by you being nice to someone that's not nice to you, and especially if they're not a Christian, they're going to wonder why you're different. And when they ask you, you can tell them because you belong to Jesus and that Jesus came into your heart and that you have given your whole life to Jesus for him to use you any kind of way he wants to. Uh, pastor said to the grownups, because the apostle Paul said he was a bond servant, that would be like a slave, someone that said, I don't belong to myself anymore. 
God is my master. And that's, that's basically it today. The title again was Genuine Love from uh, Romans, which is an epistle, and um, the 12th chapter, verses 9 through 21, if you want to look it up later yourself. And that's really about all I wanted to share today, that right now, especially some of us grown-ups are having uh, a stressful time. Uh, and I know some of you kids are too, uh, about school, not being able to go or going and being worried when you get there. Uh, but this is a time that God's love for us and our love for him should allow us to realize that he's protect, like our last, last week's message, he's protecting us. We don't have to worry. We don't have to get, as pastor calls it, grumpy. We don't have to get mean, and we don't have to act evil because all this is going on. And I'm just praying that every, nobody's stressed out, that if you get stressed out, that it, it passes very quickly. Uh, pray for your parents. Pray for your uh, aunts and uncles and cousins and neighbors. And I always say God really hears children's prayers. Because children have a special place with Jesus. He said to the disciples, Suffer the little children to come unto me, for such is the kingdom of heaven. You're really special. Especially if you're a little person that already knows Jesus. You are so wonderfully special. You've got God's love in you. So share it. Share it with your other Christians. Share it with the unbelievers. Just share it, okay? Father God, I thank you for your loving kindness, your grace, and your mercy. I thank you for your word telling us how love is supposed to be. Not how the world says love is, but how you say it's supposed to be. Help us rejoice. Help us be patient. Help us not return evil for evil. Help us be happy when someone else gets something. Help us be peaceful when it's possible, and most times it should be. And let us just love you with all of our hearts and love others so that they can feel your love through us. Jesus' precious name, amen.